Some of us rise to the challenge and fight to save others. To make the world a better place. And some of us make YouTube videos about computer stuff. And some of us do both. Dr. Brett is seeing patients. I'm here to diagnose the ails of your PC and then to prescribe what it is I think you should be doing. Diagnoses and prescriptions here on the PC doctor. So people need help figuring out what's wrong with their computer. So we're gonna go over to some subreddits and we're gonna prescribe and diagnose some of these people's PCs. Cause they need help. They're sick, they're ailing, they might die, but not on my watch. Hopefully at their house. But we're not gonna be going to the most popular posts. We're gonna find the underprescribed, the people who are being ignored by the PC community. We're gonna make sure that they're taken care of. It's telehealth for PCs and completely unsolicited, just like the best medical advice on the internet. They are asking, but they're not asking me. So let's go through the patient list. Up first, we have a patient who's asking an i3 10100F versus a Ryzen 5 3600 for a home server, but they deleted their post, which means they must have been embarrassed. They probably couldn't handle going to the doctor's office. The patient clearly embarrassed of their condition. They need to understand what exactly is going on here. I'm here to help. So typically, if you're building out a server for like Plex, I would say go with the Intel. But the key issue here, the symptom I think most doctors are gonna miss is that uh, it's the i3-10100F. So it doesn't have an integrated GPU, which means QuickSync's not gonna be available. So my prescription would be for the Ryzen 5 3600 if you need the multi-core processing. And I'm assuming that you're gonna use a GPU for all your offloading. Easy prescription, Ryzen 5 3600. Next patient. My friends, today's video is sponsored by Best Buy. And if you're looking for stupendous tech deals to help go back to school, whether that be for your grade school or even in college, Best Buy has got you covered with their always on top deals that rotate weekly as well as daily. You can be sure to find great deals on things like Microsoft Surface laptops, any audio equipment that you'll need, or potentially even your new gaming setup that you're gonna be building in your brand new dorm room. But on top of that, Best Buy has their total tech membership, which comes with its own exclusive offers that'll help you to get exclusive deals as well as 24-7, 365 tech support, worry-free product protection, free standard installation, delivery, and haul away. But in case those deals aren't enough, they also have their price match guarantee to make sure that they have the best price all around. So on top of the top deals that they have, the total tech membership benefits as well as the price match guarantee, you can always make sure that you'll have fast fulfillment options with their in-store pickup or fast delivery options. It's great to shop at Best Buy, whether you're trying to get your kids set up in grade school, sending your young adult off to college, or just trying to find good deals this late summer season, check out Best Buy at the link in the video description. Big thanks to them for sponsoring today's video. Is this build okay? Patient is mostly worried about the case size and everything fitting. They've got an RTX 3060 Ti, Ryzen 5 5600X, a Z53 CPU cooler, which is a water cooler, a micro ATX motherboard, SFX power supply, trying to fit the case is the Lian Li Mini. I don't know what that is. I'm gonna give you a little secret about medical school kids. Doctors also have to Google things. Are we talking about the Lian Li O11 Air Mini? dynamic mini, you're gonna be fine no matter what. There's plenty of space, you're totally okay. As long as it's the traditional Lee and Lee O11 dynamic mini, it's gonna be able to fit that B550M micro ATX motherboard, no problem. You should have no symptoms, take no changes, and you'll be good to go in three to four days, because that's how long it takes to ship products to you. He also wants to know, he sees a lot of people buy extra wires for their CPU, is that necessary? It's a very common question we get all the time asked in medical school. The extra wires are purely for good looking. And if you care at all about the aesthetics, go see a plastic surgeon. That's the prescription. Totally not confusing <laughs> but no, it is not medically necessary for you to have extra wires for your CPU. It is just so that you can impress people who aren't in your life because you're a lonely gamer and you have nobody coming over, which is probably the thing you need to address first. Too far? Next patient. Next patient. The patient is a first time builder who's exhibiting symptoms of gamonitis and animatosis. Their coverage is limited and they're looking for generic prescriptions to save money on their copay. 
It appears that patient is delusional in attempting to self-administer a hard drive. The patient fully states, first time builder here looking at a 1500 pound build for gaming and animating. Gone a little over budget, but wondering if these parts look fine and if there's any way I could cut costs. So first up, the CPU, Ryzen 7 5800X. Admirable, gonna keep you going, but you can likely go on down to a Ryzen 7 5700X, cut a little bit of costs and not really see very much performance degradation. Your CPU cooler is the Hyper 212 Black Edition. That is a great choice. The only issue there is if you are trying to cut costs to get it down, it's unnecessary. It's actually what we refer to in the PC doctor community as vestigial. Because the Ryzen 7 5700X should come with its own CPU cooler, so you could cut that out. The motherboard is an X570S Aorus Elite ATX motherboard. You could probably cut costs here by going with a B550. You likely don't need all of the features that the X570S comes with, but in case you're having hearing issues and you don't want to hear the whir of a motherboard fan, X570S, the S stands for silence, you might be better off getting that. The RAM is 32 gigabytes of DDR4, 3200 CL16 memory, crucial ballistics. There's no cutting costs there. If you need 32 gigs of RAM, that is the base level RAM that you should get very plain looking, will fit in the system nicely and give you all of the performance that your PC desperately needs. Part of a balanced diet. The SSD is a one terabyte Crucial P2, not gonna cut much cost there. The Seagate Barracuda, one terabyte, 5,400 RPM internal hard drive. See, that is where your symptoms are coming in, my friend. You're trying to sprint down a hill while running at a marathon pace. You're not gonna set any records and you're gonna trip over your feet and fall down. A 5,400 RPM hard drive in 2022, friend. I can't even let you walk out of my office thinking that's okay. If this was 7,200 RPM, I would be a little bit kinder with your desire to destroy your own system. I'm trying to think of like medical terms. But as it stands now, you're on a dark path to needing some serious issues being resolved later on if you don't change course right now. Additionally, it's only 25 pounds more to get an SSD. Just get the SSD, upgrade that one terabyte to two terabyte if you need the storage, please my friend. I've seen too many people do this. If you've been a doctor as long as I have, you've seen so many people lose sleep, lose game time, lose their sanity over a hard drive. Don't be one of those people, especially when you want a 3070 Ti. Just a yeah, 3070 Ti is a great card. It's probably a little bit cheaper from the time posted because GPU prices are falling. P360A mid tower case, that's a little small. The, the Fantex P360A, I've built in many of those in my medical school training. Uh, if you go back on the channel, you can see me use a lot of Fantex cases. Everything's gonna fit. It's not necessarily a concern. It's just that you might outgrow your body and there might be some stretch marks that will appear. 850 watt, 80 plus gold, fully modular power supply. Good choice, Corsair RM, that's great. The monitor, you're kind of skimping out on here. It's a 1080p, 24 inch, 75 hertz monitor. I guess because you didn't have very much money left. I don't see you saving all of that much, to be quite honest. You can knock about 50 pounds off of the CPU. You can knock another 40 pounds off by not getting a CPU cooler. You could probably knock another 30 pounds off by getting a cheaper motherboard. You're over 100 pounds saved, which gets you closer to the 1500 pound milestone that you're looking for without compromising a whole lot of performance. Hope that helps. Next patient. The patient has received new medication, but trouble understanding how to self-administer. How can this guy properly replace his boot hard drive to a new SSD and consolidate his other hard drives a bit? The patient recently got a two terabyte NVMe drive trying to make it his main drive. He already has a one terabyte hard drive running Windows 10, a three terabyte hard drive full of games and photos, a small 256 gig SSD, and is trying to figure out how to consolidate all of that. Now, there are a couple different schools of thought here, okay? This is like the difference between an MD and a DO. One could potentially just say, install Windows fresh on the two terabyte SSD, keep everything else installed, copy the files you need over to the main one, and then 
throw out the hard drives in the trash because they're absolutely useless or donate it to a local school in case you want to torture them. Or you could go through the effort of cloning your hard drive onto the new one using some sort of cloning software, which will give you an exact one for one replica of what you currently have on the new big drive, giving you some more space to work with. He wants to keep the three terabyte hard drive for games and photos. I think that's a little unacceptable. There is no reason games should be running off of hard drives here in 2022. Keeping it as cold storage for photos, potentially putting in a network attached storage that's not really accessed very often, that's fine. But put all of your games on a two terabyte SSD. That's gonna make a lot more sense in my opinion professional medical opinion. They additionally want to know if they'll have any trouble with Windows licensing. They have a legitimate version of Windows 7, which was upgraded to Windows 10. See, this is the beauty of the medical profession. I can give you advice that you may not know otherwise. You don't have to pay for a Windows license. It's actually completely legal. Big Pharma doesn't want you to know this, but I would get a kickback if I told you to check the affiliate link in the video description to pick up a Windows 10 license, but Microsoft actually sells it to you for free on their website. You just need to download the ISO and then you're good to go. And then as far as installing graphics drivers, you will likely have to go to the website of your GPU manufacturer, whether it's AMD or Nvidia and download those. But that is a very minor task. And depending on which GPU you actually have, it might just actually pop up during the Windows installation that you'll still have Windows drivers if you wait long enough. You can keep your three terabyte drive untouched, but install everything else fresh and that'll give you the best experience. Check back with me in 30 seconds because that's how fast your SSD is going to be to get into video games. This next patient wants to know if a 650 watt power supply is going to be adequate to run his entire system. Oh, you're trying to find out if the old ticker is good enough to keep you running. Thankfully, there are resources out there that can actually help you with this. You don't need to come into the doctor. You can take care of this one at home by doing a few little exercises. There are several companies out there that put power supply calculators out on the internet. So if you plug all of your specifications into the power supply calculator, you get a good understanding of what it is that you're actually gonna need to run your system. And if you're concerned that your GPU might not be enough, you can actually even over-prescribe how much of your system is capable of by just saying, hey, this is what my system that I'm looking to upgrade to is gonna have. And that way you can future-proof your power supply as well. But with the Ryzen 5 5600X and an RX 6700 XT, several of the websites are saying between five and 700 watts. Now, the concern from the patient is that that might not be enough. Something's gonna fry on startup, but in reality, Typically, your power consumption is going to need to be below half of what the rated power supply is capable of doing in order to get the best efficiency. The 5600X and 6700XT are roughly gonna get you around less than 400 watts completely maxed out, so getting a 700 watt power supply is more than adequate. You don't need to worry, my friend. Now, is that gonna be enough for the next generation of GPUs, which are supposed to consume tons more power? We'll have to find out when Big Sugar wants us to find out. The sugar industry is the worst. The next patient is curious about some custom modifications, primarily of the brain and of the graphics brain. They're looking for an upgrade path of their Ryzen 5 2600 and a GTX 1070. The patient states that they're starting to upgrade their setup on a tight budget and they think they can do one of each every two months or less. They plan to upgrade the RAM first to get G-Skilled Trident Z 32 gigs, but their next question is whether or not they should upgrade their graphics card to go to a 3060 Ti or 6600 XT or their processor going to a 5600 X. I'm going to prescribe, and this may be controversial, upgrade your graphics first, see if the frame rate's acceptable, then upgrade your processor, which would then give you the ability to upgrade things like your SSD to get PCI Express 4.0 storage. You could go down the whole list, but graphics first, especially in a balanced system like this. Next patient, the patient's exhibiting interest in the PC building world on a budget, looking to play things like Elden Ring, Doom Eternal, CSGO WoW, and some RTSs at 144 hertz. You're not playing Elden Ring at that speed, my friend, not with that box. 
body. Not sure if insurance is gonna cover this one. Their previous PC was a pre-built from 2014. They did some upgrades on it, but it's old tech. They wanna build in October with a price range of 1,000 euro to 1,100 euro. I have no clue if it's enough for a PC. Also, I need a Wi-Fi card and I don't have cable internet. I would also like to ask how to choose the right monitor. I would like 144 Hertz, but again, I am clueless. That This is very simple. Unfortunately, I cannot prescribe you anything right now because October is actually gonna be one of the preeminent times to build a PC. We're currently waiting on the launch of some new CPUs as well as some new graphics cards that could potentially change what my prescription would be here. Or they would allow you to get a really good system that I could prescribe right now at a much lower cost. But I will caution you that we have thought that before, like with the launch of the RTX 30 series, people thought GPUs were going to go down in price and the exact opposite happened and they spiked in price and people were left out to dry. But achieving a PC that can hit the desired frame rates in the games that you're stating for thousand euro is actually relatively within reason. It's likely going to take something like an RX 6600 with medium settings at 1080p but you should be able to make that happen. But again, if you're planning on building in October, don't take anybody's advice right now. My prescription is no prescription. Wait and see if it goes away in four or five days. And if you still have it in four hours, call a real doctor. Looks like that's all the time that we have for today. But you know, a doctor's work is never quite finished. So post your PC questions that you want the PC doctor to answer in our subreddit, reddit.com forward slash r forward slash UFD tech. And I'll use my totally real PhD in computerology to heal your system through the internet. I've been your PC doctor. Hope you can understand my handwriting. We'll see you next time. Don't die in the meantime. Doctor who wears shorts. It's got a dumb truck.